So my dad has this saying, if you're not paying for it, you're the product. I want to talk a little about what an internet based on this premise could mean for our future. Let's say I'm looking for new shoes. Maybe I'm not even sure what shoes I want. So I go to a shoe store, a big shoe warehouse with rows of shoes as far as the eye can see. I want to explore my options. But the second I walk in, a shoe sales rep sees the Nikes on my feet and scoops up a box of shoes and proceeds to follow me around the store, showing me all the options of shoes he thinks I want to see and obstructing my view of all the numerous rows of shoes in the warehouse. In this situation, it'd be reasonable for anyone to say, no thank you, please stop showing me shoes, I'd like to look on my own now. But on the internet, you don't get this choice. Almost everything you search for, everything you see, and everything suggested for you is targeted specifically for you. It's the cyber equivalent of this salesperson. This is an analogy for the modern internet. But to understand where we are and how we got here, we need to take a step back and talk about the evolution of the Internet of Things. The Internet is great in so many ways. It connects us to people we'd never be able to talk to otherwise. And if I were in the 90s looking at the Internet as it was kicking off, I'd be thinking, wow, this is going to be such a great advance for humanity. The knowledge and discovery and communication are no longer limited by location or education or means. It's truly the democratization of information flow where once big news outlets controlled what was relevant and printed, now anyone can be a voice of thoughts, information, knowledge, each website its own voice. So wouldn't that improve discourse, promote tolerance, and raise awareness of the world around us? Presumably, due to the diversity of thoughts and information in the world, we'd constantly be presented with beliefs, some agreeable and some opposing our own beliefs. But we all know that's not really the case right now. And why is that? Gradually, over time, communities on the internet developed where people with specific interests could congregate to share their beliefs and relate, etc. In the early days of the web, this division of the general space of the internet into small unrepresentative pockets of people was very clearly defined by chat rooms. A user could step from the general space of the internet in and out um, of more specific information in a chat room to more general information on the internet at large. Over time, more and more people began to migrate to fewer and fewer access points for information. Currently, we only have about a handful of content providers, Google, Facebook, YouTube, to name a couple. These content providers are the internet salespeople. They're selling you what they think you want to see based on what they know about you. And this information is usually some amount that has accumulated since you started visiting their site. But sometimes the information is bought. So before you even visit their site, they have a pretty good idea of what, who they think you are. This provides us with the survival of the fittest. We've put exceeding amounts of pressure on these few companies to provide us with what we want to see. And the last 10 years has given us numerous ways to do this. Content targeting algorithms are just a statistical programming way of sorting and predicting things with data, user data in this case. It's surprising how well algorithms can predict this. When I open up Google, I'm expecting to see a smattering of information roughly in ranked in terms of popularity. When I open up Facebook, I'm expecting to see a sample of everything that's happening in my social circles. When I go to the front page of YouTube, I expect to see uh, the music and videos that are popular today. But what I'm ending up with is a real small subset in reality. I'm seeing what these content providers think I should see based on what they know about me. And lines dividing groups of people on the internet today are completely invisible. I'm part of a group of people, maybe even as few as just myself, who open up Facebook to see a specific combination of information out of all the possible things I could be seeing on my newsfeed. It's not random. There's a dollar sign attached to knowing everything about you. So where you're from, what websites you visited, and what browser you're on, what computer you're using, is all used and all determines what you see online. Turning on the TV to Good Morning America is now opening up Facebook to Good Morning Sam. It's scary how good these content targeting algorithms are. 
I'm going to be graduating in a month, and I keep seeing posts like 10 worst job interview stories of all times, and six things you should never put up with on your first job, and my personal favorite, 10 do's and don'ts when moving back in with your parents. <laughs> Thanks, Facebook. Real vote of confidence there. These machine learning algorithms are absolutely brilliant. You don't even need to know what you're searching for to happen upon some type of insight in the population you're studying. But unknowingly, widespread use of these algorithms is biasing how people see the world around them. And it's affecting their, it's reaffirming their existing beliefs. But what I'm really getting at is the shoe warehouse is vanishing before our eyes and our entire perception of the internet is becoming the shoe salesperson's offerings. It sounds so simple, but it's really quite invisible. There's just so much out there in the vastness of the internet that even the most small, customized subset of this vastness can feel like an entire universe unto itself. Every point of access to information on the internet is being censored with what content providers think you want to see. It reminds me of this great book called Feed, where every character has a device embedded into their brainstem, and companies send them content right to their eyes and ears. The character's entire world, right down to their senses, is customized and sold right back to them. Kind of sounds like the modern internet experience. These characters become incredibly small-minded and unaware as their world crumbles around them. A good example of the real dangers of content targeting algorithms is the fake news outbreak that plagued 2016. For instance, a group of Macedonian men realized that it could be profitable to write inflammatory, and mind you, completely fake news stories and post them on Facebook and generate revenue from the ad banners on the sides. Facebook content targeting algorithms would then extract keywords from the articles and know to share them to the right people who would probably agree with them most. This set off a chain reaction where the, these people in turn would share the articles and their friends without maybe reading, would share and post instead. So I'm putting the blame on us. Broadly speaking, the humans involved. We all sometimes click and share without really reading through or fact checking. But most importantly, I credit the content targeting algorithms. Not once did any of these algorithms stop to think whether these articles made any sense or had any hint of fact to them. They never paused to evaluate whether it was even ethical to be spreading information that was so unequivocally false. While nobody was watching, fake news spread like wildfire. And when I say nobody was watching, it's because anybody who disagreed with or could have otherwise critically evaluated the content of these articles, they weren't even being shown the articles. Fake news is insidious, just like spam. And Mark Zuckerberg has committed Facebook to fact-checking its way out of this mess. He's hoping that fake news will go the way of spam. We currently have excellent programs sorting away junk mail, so none of it meets our eyes. But this isn't really getting at the issue at hand. What we need is a jump out button for all of our content providers. Get that shoe salesman out of my face. I'm feeling adventurous today. We need this button because it would produce less bias, less infinite echo chambers, less self-confirmation, and most importantly, less fake news. Free is how the internet was meant to be, and we need to be able to lift the veil of bias and misdirection that we are being fed online. So with that in mind and looking to the future, Let's spark a change with how we interact with information on the internet today. Thank you.